The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. And I'm ready to go crazy because the Celtics are going all the way. Hey, Nick, go handle our light work. Bowl games matter. I would like a cold cut sandwich. Oh, boy, how bad? You can call him Eamon Owens because he ain't got no D and he ain't got no J. James Madison. Turn your body cams off. Do what you do. What is up, everybody? It is Tuesday night. That means it is time for another edition of Craft Brewed Sports. We are five days away from my favorite holiday of the year, St. Patrick's Day. This is your yearly reminder. Don't be like Mookie. It's P-A-D-D-Y, not P-A-T-T-Y. Uh, spell it correctly in all your posts and all your tweets, all your Instagram hashtags. Don't be that guy, P-A-D-D-Y. Uh, Scott, how you feeling tonight, man? I love me some patty mayonnaise. That's all <laughs> I got to say. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm Mark safe from, you know, having to worry about it. You Irish do your thing. <laughs> Just turn off your body cams. <laughs> You're not gonna, you're not gonna go out and have a green beer or uh, or something. Isn't uh, that like amateur hour? Yeah, like that's exactly. not what you do. Yeah. Like, don't you eat like some some dry ass bread or some shit? And whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Irish soda bread is not dry ass bread. Okay, it's a little dry. It's a little dry. <laughs> it's dry. Okay, I mean, truth be told, I've never had it. I've just seen it. I'm like, damn, that shit looks dry as hell. It's a little. I'm, listen, it's not like chapped lips, bro. It's it's a little. <laughs> it's good though. It's some good shit, man. Oh, you, man. I'm, I'm baking a loaf on Thursday. I, okay, I, that's I, what I heard. You know, save me some. Save me some. <laughs> By the time I get to it, it'll be dry as hell. I can promise you that. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm making on Thursday. You can stop over before the show. On oh Tuesday. God, I, I won't get to it till Tuesday, son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> We've been down this road. That bar pointing out the group chat call out. That's right. <laughs> Mookie committed the high sin of spelling St. Patty's Day P A T T Y. I was so disappointed. In it you. was it was real bad, y'all. It was real real <laughs> bad. Uh, because and, and, and we should check the timestamps because it went on for like a good solid fifteen minutes. I had no idea what I did. I really thought I like I I done it. I was like, man, I've gone and actually pissed Mike off. Like, I feel like we <laughs> we say a lot of shit in the group chat and stuff because there is that like understanding of like, yo, that we're we're just fucking Trust around me. and working on material, right? Trust a little Trust bit. Yeah, we're all good. Yeah, and I was like, shit, like I finally fucking did it. What the hell? And then Mr. Matt Barr chimed into the the thread and he's like, I'm just glad I'm here for this. I was like, oh, okay. So I'm just, I'm being really dumb and fuck something up. I still couldn't figure it out for like 15 minutes. And then I realized it was the P A T T Y instead of the P A D D Y. And I was like, oh, son of a bitch. It's, I don't know what's worse, drinking green beer on St. Patrick's Day or spelling it P A T T Y. I don't know which one offends me more, but uh, both of them are very. Wow. Funny. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's better, Tyson's take of, quote, I had no idea what I had did, end quote, Mookie speak good English, or Tyson's <laughs> photo of Mr. Unlimited in a Steelers jersey. Ross and the Steelers. Uh, Dude, if I hadn't seen that, I would have thought it was Photoshopped. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man. And, and yes, Tyson is pointing out that Patrick is spelled with a T, but that is still not the correct spelling of Patty. That's am I Am I right? Yeah. Um, and... I, I will say, though, I think you guys buried the lead here because one of my favorite things about St. Patty's Day, other than getting blacked out Irish drunk, is the corned beef, dude. Like, Ooh, I love me a good corned beef. I'm there for that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, sign me up for the corned beef and cat. But, Mike, Mike, what is the authentic serving methodology of corned beef? Is it like the Reuben kind of style with some sauerkraut and some some soda bread? Or how does that go down? Because I usually just grab it and just eat I was going to say, I just we've hands. always just done... Uh, a scoop on the plate like that was it that okay. some, some tated and uh and then pops always had a beer that's how that goes because we're uh we're we're a I was just about to put that up there that explain to me how an entire populace can starve when they exist on an island i'll tell you how Sarah. the damn british that's how all right <laughs> the goddamn british <laughs> fuckers we got an awesome show tonight. We're going to talk the legal tampering period. It's been a crazy two days in the NFL. And the rumors that are circulating have me excited and also very disappointed in my fan base. So we'll get to that. Also, we got to talk some college basketball. 
um, both male and female tournaments, uh, some, some craziness going on there. And I have a baseball story. I left it out of the rundown when I sent it to you guys, but it is geared towards Mookie uh, because Mookie is going to be very excited to hear this because he gets to play one of his favorite drops. We'll get to all of that later. Before we do, though, let's talk about these beers that we are drinking. We're going to rate them on Caesar scale, dog or no dog. Scott, what is in your mug today, dog or no dog? I was bullied into finally getting new beer. So, <laughs> but I, I kept it local again. I went with High Grain Brewing Company's Acai Bowl Sour, 5.4% with acai, blueberries, strawberries, banana, toasted coconut, and just the right amount of lactose for that sweet, smooth finish. So, I'm going all Robert Taylor with the laundry list of uh, ingredients, but yo, this is dog as fuck. <laughs> Really? really it's delicious yeah i i would I you, know, you know i don't mess with, i was like oh yeah i was just gonna say you know i don't like venture into the sours too much and i was like eh, screw it i'm let's live a little it's delicious there there's no bitter sour aftertaste it's smooth i think maybe that lactose cuts it a little bit i'm i'm, I'm digging it oh very nice uh mookie what what are you drinking uh dog or no dog it's, it's an absolute dog, and not just because it's from Brew Dog, but it's uh, Brew Dog's Hazy, alcohol free. Had this a couple oh, times nice. before, but man, today it's it's been a while since I went to it. I've been to like the Budweiser Zero and whatever, but coming back to this, it's fresh, dude, which maybe says that I have been not drinking for long enough because A, I don't know how to spell patty, but B, awesome <laughs> drinking this alcohol free hazy. Like, oh my God, it's so hazy and juicy. I love it, but honestly, it, it, it hits great. So, absolute dog. And I do want to remind everyone here on this show, we are anti-bullying because as Caesar says, consent is important. That extends to bullying. So don't don't act a fool. Be cool. (laughs) It's life advice, man. I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. (laughs) We're just going to let that sit. Uh, Rex wants to know Lou Holtz's tips for a Saint, uh, oh safe boy. St. Patrick's Day. Guys, I think we just found our first Lou Holtz video to put in. Uh, Lou yeah. Holtz's tips for a safe St. Patrick's Day. I'm sure old Lou Holtz has lots of tips for a safe St. Patrick's Day. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to have to be a video that we put out as Lou Holtz in character. So thank you for that idea, Rex Million. We're, uh, I'm, I'm coming through with that one. Gabe rightfully uh, pointing out as Tyson tries to say Patty equals Patrick with the T's. Patty is the shortened form of Patrick. And, uh, as the Irish name goes, uh, you also have to remember Tyson Patrick comes from the Irish name Padraig. That's where the D comes from. Get it right. Uh, let's talk about these beers in the comments here. Rex Million is drinking Hop Avenger IPA 7.7% ABV. It's a dog. Gabe's got a mixed drink, Cutwater Vodka Mule, 7% oh. ABV dog. Dude, I've seen those Cutwaters. Have you yeah. had any of those? Yeah. Scott? I, I have had those. There's a couple of them that are pretty good. I was surprised. The wife got the wife picked them up, and I was like, eh, it's probably going to be, you know, one of those things where it gives you heartburn or it, the taste isn't great. But I was surprised. And they're, they're kind of hard hitting. The one she had was 8.5%. Oh, dang. Yeah, it, 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 it'll get you get him, get I you mean, messed up quick. I, you, know. you can't chug them, but they're good. Well, you, you can. Well, yes, <laughs> I mean, you could. You got to test the gangster right. uh, if, yeah. if you want to. Alice uh, Brewing's Distillery. Oh, shit. Uh, Sarah pointing out, Scott, you're drinking a superfood. I am. I am. That's That was also the thing. I was like, I... Every time I see something with acai berries, I'm like, eh, I don't know. That's one of those new age. I got, is it is it a real berry? Is it a real thing, or is that something like we created like, genetically? It, grown yeah, it doesn't it enough. doesn't sound real, but you know, <laughs> it sounds like something they market to white women. <laughs> the is it, are you saying that it's are you saying it a pumpkin spice or no a, a IPA for women? Yeah, I fucked it up. Go on. It's it's <laughs> it's fine. It's funny because you started right and then you yeah. get back. Are you, you saying it's pumpkin spice, spice lattes for dudes, even though it's a berry for girls? <laughs> Fuck shit. How's that go? I wanted Mookie the way he was starting out. I wanted him to say, "Is acai berries just pumpkin spice lattes for, for women?" women. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was gonna finish that too. I was like, "This is happening. This is glorious." <laughs> I was watching them for the train wreck, just waiting for it to happen. <laughs> you, you peeled off the track, Mookie. I'm proud of you. 
Uh, Matt Barr is drinking Hardywood Brew, Hardywood Brewing Tropical Sheep Mullet. He put this can art in the Facebook group before the show. It is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, juicy double IPA, nine percent. This is Beethoven. That's dumb. Tyson bringing back the Southern Tier mm. French Toast Imperial Ale. He's got to be getting close to the end of that six pack. Right <laughs> Put that dog in me. Okay, man, do what you got to do. Gabe pulled a race card. Who's got the who's who's the race? Card? Is that on you, Scott? Or I, I probably, but I don't know. Oh, the white women thing. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's race me. card. Fair enough. I'll take that one. Although, <laughs> more more to the point, Gabe in the, the comments section asking about Mookie and any update <laughs> with the kids, which I had just asked the same question moments before the show started. Didn't pay attention to the time. I look up as Mookie's like, yeah, it's going great, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, well, it's 8 o'clock. Hold on to it. We got to start the show out on here from everybody for being late and just totally cut him off. <laughs> It's fine. Hey, you got the update, man. It's good. Real it's good. good. We're good. <laughs> Perfect. Do we have that sound? I think we do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the drive. I think it's on just your board, though. I don't think it's one uh, I can hit over here. Just really quiet. That's the problem. It's a really Ooh. quiet drop. Real Anyways, uh, this week I'm drinking uh, Founders All Day Chill Day. Uh, so I'm getting through that Founders Discovery Pack. This is the third of four in that one. Um, it's good. It's a session IPA. Um, you know, it is, it is what it is. It's a, it's a puppy. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a full on dog, but it's a puppy. It's pretty solid. Why are you laughing over there, Mookie? What is, <laughs> if it's one thing Scott knows, it's white women's. I mean, facts on facts. Like, it's, when, when you're dropping truth bombs and they explode, there's not much you can do. <laughs> <laughs> like, it shouldn't be that funny, but it's killing me right now. <laughs> I, I think it's the I think it's the S. It's yes, the S yes, for me. That's the right, right, exactly. White women. White women. You understood the assignment. Well done, Tyson. Uh, <laughs> what a... Wow. What Plus, it's the Mr. Unlimited. It's that still kills me. Like, that's that's going to be so fun to watch that just fall apart. How over under seven and a half games before Mike Tomlin puts his foot through Russell's okay, ass. OK, Mookie, I don't I know you missed last week because you were sick, but I don't know if you forgot how we do this. So let's let's start off the show oh, talking. Right, about right, 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 that's right, what yeah. Mookie wants to talk. <laughs> I don't need you 20 minutes from now being like, did we play the drop? Because you I just really like, that. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like your like I do and introduce the segment and then we can talk about it. Fair, fair. <laughs> so okay, since we're we getting were... into football, honestly, I can't remember a last uh, legal tampering day that has been so hot. Like there's been so many moves that I honestly think are not only impactful, but they're just fun to talk about. And I don't remember the last time this happened. Um, but yeah, R Russell, oh God, it's going to be great to watch that fall apart because it's, it's, it's going to fall apart. It's not going to work. There's no way. Right. Well, I mean, look, Russ is not the best quarterback. He's not what he used to be, but he's also way better than Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph. So I think it's an upgrade. Like the Steelers made the playoffs, like they're a, a decent team and now they just upgraded their quarterback position. Mike Tomlin's probably pretty jazzed about this. The, the person who's not happy is Kenny Pickett in his tiny hands. He's very upset that Russ is now coming in and taking his thunder. But now the AFC North, you have uh, – so you got Russ going to Cleveland. Uh, Austin Eckler, uh, didn't he – no, is Austin Commanders. Eckler? Commanders. Commanders. Commanders, yeah. Oh, he went yeah, – Derek, yeah, he Derek went Henry to Derek the Henry. Ravens. Did, yes, thank you. Derek Dude. Henry to the Ravens was what I was thinking of there. Uh, so now you have Derrick Henry and Lamar in the same backfield. Yeah. That's unreal. That's scary, dude. Like, honestly, because think about it. You've got Derrick Henry who can get you five yards between the tackles on any snap, hands down. And then you've got Lamar who can run around on the outside and throw the ball. Like, plus that defense isn't terrible, and I don't think they lost a whole lot. Like, hey, not to mention, didn't they win the division with, like, 12 wins last year? And they got better somehow? <sighs> Man, so I I feel bad for your Bengals, Mike, and I'm not trying to talk shit, but like putting Derrick Henry on that Ravens offense is scary, man. 
Uh, mm. yeah, you should feel bad for my Bengals uh, because while all of the AFC North is making moves and you know the Browns get Jerry Judy and the Steelers upgrade their quarterback and the Ravens add Derrick Henry, the Bengals uh, put a franchise tag on T. Higgins and then he requests a trade and then they <laughs> trade away Joe Mixon and uh, probably going to lose Tyler Boyd. And uh, it, it's – Th this sucks, man. This absolutely sucks to see teams making moves and my team is just losing players. <laughs> like, it is hey, they brutal. signed that one guy. It's so one brutal. Back. Where am I gonna go? I yeah, I was I was trying to figure out how to work. <laughs> I know I tried to right, shoehorn it in before you could, and I would get this. <laughs> uh, I, but I got to be honest though, Mike. Like realistically, I do think the Bengals are just in a really tough spot because you, especially with that wide receiver core eating up the cap, but you got to pay them. Gabe also saying you got a tight end. I didn't see that, but yeah, I guess we're talking like, about like, on the field or off the field. Hello, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Zinger. Boy's been doing squats. Thanks for noticing, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> he says as the camera shows him from nipples up. Yeah, go figure. Uh, but yeah, seriously, Mike, what what would you have liked them to do differently? Like, I I just I don't know. I honestly don't something. know what else. They just do done. something. Give <laughs> me some hope. Fire someone. Pay do someone. Something. I, I sit there and I watch. I saw a graphic that was like coming into today. Here's the teams with the most cap space. And the Bengals were like number six in the league with like forty six million dollars in cap space or something crazy like that. And it's like, do something. Sign somebody. Give me something to be hopeful for. Because I'm not. I'm not hopeful. Yo, 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 Zach Moss's mama didn't raise no Zach Moss. Up. That's right. Come That's on, who it was. Yeah. Zach Moss is in the house. They did something. He was the leading rusher before, you know, the starter came back. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I also, he I don't see Robert Joe Taylor. Mixon for a guy two years younger, if that, and, and not a start. What are we doing? What is this team doing? They let Awuzie hey, walk. Awuzie hey, walk. look, 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 man. This is the price of success. I, eventually, the, it catches up to you. Everybody was like, oh, man, what are the Niners going to do to get over the hump? I was like, I don't know. Hope to have money to do anything. Like, we're looking at having to re-sign a bunch of guys. Then it was, all right, legal tampering period has started. Niners proceed to beg multiple players to take giant pay cuts. Oh, you don't want one? Bye. So <laughs> uh, it's the name of the game. Like the cat may not be real, but at some point, guys who are making you know too much money and their production may not be enough. Like it's part of it. Would you like to go back to when you guys were paying a bunch of guys or bringing in a bunch of B-list free agents and not winning games? Because I'm sure they can arrange that. I feel like that's where we're headed. That's what, that's what we're staring down the barrel of. We're staring down the barrel of them going, but Joe Burrow's here, so that's good enough, right? All right, let's just put in whoever else. And, Scott, you you talk about the Niners. Like, the Bengals don't have a bevy of assistant coaches that are minorities that are going to get hired <laughs> on to give us third round draft picks, all right? Well, that's not that's, fair. That's, that's, that's hey, the that's, Niners can get rid of people, right? Uh, uh, that's, like, a, oh, that's, a head, that's a head coaching problem. You better tell Zach to start dipping in, you know, dipping oh, in to, oh, to, oh, to oh, other oh, avenues. Zach feels comfortable around black people? I don't think so, sir. I was Zach just going to say that. And also, <laughs> no. race card. Is one hundred percent true, and I was going to say it the other way though, Mike. Like, you think that Zach Taylor is going to go and interview a minority head coach, and that that coach is like, "Yeah, I, I want to come work for Zach Taylor." Like, mm, <laughs> I could, I could just see the way I, I feel that interaction would go could be summed up in that typical like, you go for the fist pump, and they go for the high five, and then you alternate, <laughs> and it's just this awkward fucking thing. And like, that would be how Zach Taylor got along with those coaches, and that's just not a viable strategy. Speaking of awkward white guys now surrounded by a bunch of black guys, how about Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta? That's weird, <laughs> man. What a weird <laughs> upper wings. What a weird move that is. Um, I laughed really hard when I saw this signing because Atlanta could have had Lamar Jackson for oh 200 God, million, yeah. and instead they're paying Kirk Cousins 180. <laughs> like what? What a what a bag, dude. Drop. When I, when I that. saw that contract signing, the first thing I thought about was Dave Chappelle as Tiger for Shizzle. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> this Kirk just coming out to the press conference. Just I always wanted to say this for Shizzle. <laughs> What what a legend though! That motherfucker is a legend at the bank. He's made what almost three hundred million guaranteed in his contract. Uh, yeah, 
Oh like, my god! Seriously, what a legend! I wish I could make. Like, hats off to Kirk. I, you know, and and, I, and, and at, it's at good the, money if you can make it. At the peak of Kirk Cousins, he was maybe what six best quarterback in the league, eighth. Ooh, probably more I was just gonna say, I was like, like, was he ever top ten at his peak? I, I mean, see, I, I think he was very back end, of the top maybe. ten once or twice, but Ugh. never really that good. And yet, dude, he's thirty six. He's, he's been in the, the league for twelve years or so, like. Holy shit, man. Talk about squeezing every ounce of value out of your rock. Like, bully for you, man. So what does this mean for uh, for Desmond Ritter? Like, is my boy going to get traded? What what happens I think to he's Ritter? Fine. He needs to figure out how to get on that uh, shit. What was the guy that came into Minnesota and won that game after being there four days and like played on three teams this fall? He needs to get on that that train of just being that that eternal backup that can keep catching deals until he's like 40. There is nothing wrong with being a, a Colt McCoy type guy where you're just in the right. league. Just, right. <laughs> like, Cat, cash and checks, man. Right. Cash yeah. and checks. Wearing the hat on the sidelines, like sitting down after the, the starter hey, makes a mistake. I, I know what I don't want to hear, though, no more. I don't want to hear nobody in, in or outside of Atlanta talking about, yeah, well, you know, Kyle Pitts, though, once he gets a real quarterback, Kyle Pitts, this motherfucker better ball now. Kyle Pitts better blow the fuck up because all I've heard is how he's a generational tight end and he's been ass as hell since he came to the league. So Kyle Pitts, you're on the clock, bitch. And and like the funny part too is, it's is felt Kirk- unnecessary there, Scott. It's sort of been unnecessary. Oh, I'm just I'm no, sick no. of hearing about I'm sick of hearing about this dude. Like it's always been like, oh, you know, well, it's not his fault that he hasn't had quarterback play and blah blah blah. I'm like, is it though? Like, I guess we're gonna find out. Like I feel like if you're a generational tight end, you know, somebody will find you. It's like, true. like, like even when, remember, and it, it takes, it takes a minute to remember, but remember when Tony Gonzalez was the only player the chiefs had yeah. and the yeah. likes of Brody Croyle and in the shit quarterbacks, they ran out yeah. there that were able to find Tony Gonzalez. So if you're good, the ball will find you. So I don't want to hear anything more from, from Pitts's ass. <laughs> That's a Plus how much, point. how much money did Kirk cousins make uh Kyle Rudolph? And like, there were, who was the other guy that was in Minnesota? Like, they had two tight ends that had big fucking contracts in Minnesota, left in free agency and did shit. So Kirk loves him some tight ends, and yes, phrasing intended. So you're right, Scott. And even though Sarah says, uh, "Yeah, the bitch seemed personal," I think it was warranted. Also, <laughs> Kirk has an A plus agent. Absolutely right, Sarah. But Matt Barr opening up a can of worms. He says Kirk is good. I'll die on this hill. QB wins isn't a stat. I. Listen, I yeah. would agree that Kirk is good. I don't yeah, think he's Kirk is a good. bad quarterback. He's not great by any stretch of the imagination. He's a good quarterback. He's, he's not top good. 10. He's it, he's maybe top 15 even seems hard, though. So, like, as long as that's what good is, I'd agree. He seems like the Tony Romo who didn't play for the Cowboys. Like, I mean, let's be honest. He just put up a bunch of gaudy stats but never went in any playoff games. Like, that's that's who Kirk Cousins is. He's good enough to get you there, not good enough to win you shit. That's fair. That's fair. But how much of that is on him? Like, if you look at their playoff games that they've had, it's not like Kirk lost them the playoff games. You know what I mean? Like, sure, he didn't ball out and go crazy and throw for 800 yards and carry the team on his back, but he also didn't lose the games either. So I feel like I feel like there's a lot of criticism on Kirk that is a little unwarranted. Like, he's fine. He's an upgrade over what Atlanta had before. He's fine. Uh, it's a dumb yeah. idea, I think, to pay him 180 when you could have put, uh, paid Lamar 200, but he's super dumb. Fine. He's he's a serviceable quarterback he's a and he's a goofball him and his khakis and his coles dresses it's, it's you like that okay okay <laughs> i mean that was yeah that was that was the peak Kirk cousins right there honestly and and matt we are gonna name 14 qbs better so i'm gonna go straight down the list scott mike stop me when i hit someone that you think kirk is better than all right tua Jared Goff, Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, Brock Purdy, Patty Mahomes, Jordan Love, C.J. Stroud, Baker Mayfield, Trevor Lawrence, Matt Stafford, Sam Howell, Derek That's Carr. Better. He's better than Sam Howell. I'd Sam Howell. Cool. Okay, so that put him 11th. But I also think you got some guys like Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson I hadn't named yet, so he gets to mm-hmm. go underneath mm-hmm. them, and Justin mm-hmm. Herbert. And so now you're right there at 15. So suck it, Matt. 
Wait, dancing uh, Tua. Yeah, I was going to say, I almost stopped you on Tua because Tua is not great either. But I mean, uh, uh, you know, I did. His brains are scrambled eggs. That doesn't Looking change the fact that the, the quarterbacks that you named after him still, I like two of while well, you could put him underneath Kirk. I don't, I'm not, there's not, there's not a whole lot on that list that I'm taking underneath him. Whoops. My bad. I didn't even name Joe Burrow. Well, That's you didn't get that far. That was literally, 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 literally I, all I, yeah, you didn't, I didn't, I went down passing yard leaders. In with the quarterback. So I know. I just went like, straight down passing yard leaders. I didn't even put effort into it. We got easily to 11 is my point. So like, Again, we go off a of passing yard leader. If you, I know what I, no, I understand, but like the you should point have is, your list by QBR, and then we would have had a oh little. Oh my bit god, better. you're look! So I'm not doing me. that. Again. Fine, no, hold on, I did it. I clicked the button. You ready? Brock Purdy, <laughs> Jack Prescott, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Matt Stafford. Oh, fuck, Kirk Cousins. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that blew up spectacular. Now, Rex had a great. <laughs> Chug drain pour in the chat there. So, um, yeah, yeah, you did <laughs> that easily. Mookie. Oh, the I should fact just that not you said his like name, so I should just it. skipped over him. It's amazing, too, because if you had just let me stop you, you would have saved yourself the embarrassment. But that's uh. That was that was a pretty big L. You just got to hold the yeah, L. You walked into that shit too. Like <laughs> the best was I saw it on his face before he said it. Before he even said, "Oh shit," his face totally changed, and then he said, <laughs> "Yeah, I, I knew, I knew." He got yeah, busted. That sucks. <laughs> But I still think Rex's sip chug drain pour is pretty solid. So he says, "Sip chug drain pour, your agent choice." Ari from Entourage, The Rock's character in Ballers, or Cousins' agent? Wow. <laughs> Wow, that's a that's a great sip, Chug Drain Pour. I am, uh, I'm sipping Cousins Agent because he is clearly doing some major work there. <laughs> and real, I'm going to chug the Rock's character in Ballers, <laughs> and I'm drain pouring Ari from Entourage because I don't know. I, I feel like I have to. Um, Mookie. <sighs> All right. Well, I have to pour Jay, pour Drain Cousins Agent just because I like the other two more. Um, I'm going to chug the rock because we would have a blast, but I don't think I'm cool enough to hang out with the rock in all honesty, even if I'm a pro athlete. You're definitely and not. You don't have big Dwayne energy. I don't have big Dwayne energy. It's sad. I'd try real hard and I, I would just wouldn't be able to keep up. Um, But I'm going to sip Ari from Entourage because I just love to watch that dude melt down. Like, and I would create problems for him and he would melt down all the time, but like it would work out because he'd be able to, to harness my insanity to his, his well, hopefully my benefit as well, but definitely his benefit. Scott, who you got on this one? Uh, I'm sipping Cousins Agent because at this point, Scott Boris needs yeah, to take some tips from this motherfucker. Um, <laughs> the, I'm chugging the rock uh, and ballers, and then I'll drain poor Ari from Entourage. So, also, um, Kirk Cousins Agent's giving real money, so I'd rather yeah, have real money yeah, than, than the fake money from the shows <laughs> that don't exist. So, you know. so so both Matt Barr and Rex would drain pour the rock, uh, but they haven't flip flopped. So Rex agrees with me would sip Ari and chug cousins <laughs> phrasing, but Matt, or sorry, pause. Uh, and Matt would sip cousins agent chug Ari and then pour drain ballers. All right. Good sip, chug drain pour. That was a solid. Uh, that, was, that was a solid one. <laughs> Um, all right, so a couple other <laughs> signings from this week uh, just to, to touch on. Austin Eckler to the commies. We talked about that. Uh, also, Christian Wilkins leaving the Dolphins and heading to the Raiders. That feels like a big move for the Raiders um, in a division that is, you know, you need a defender like that who can get after the quarterback when you got to play Patrick Mahomes twice a year. Uh, so that's a, I feel like that's pretty big for them. Any signings that you think are really – sorry, Caesar, didn't mean to bump you there. Uh, any signings that you think are really moving the needle for a team that's like, okay, that was a big one. That puts them in a, a much better position to make a run at a Super Bowl title. Anything so far, uh, Scott, anything that you're like, that was that was the one. I, I mean, I don't think that they're necessarily like moving the needle too hard, but I I, I did like the, the, the Barkley, if he can stay healthy to Philly. Uh, you know that's interesting. Ooh. Him, 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 and Hurts like that should be. And he's got a. He, he can play with a real quarterback instead of playing with Daniel Jones' sorry ass. Um, 
and and I you know I like I like the idea of seeing what the hell is gonna happen with big ass Derrick Henry running running through the middle of that uh, that offensive line and and then you know Lamar running around the sides like that'll just be fun to watch so I think those two kind of stand out there I don't think they're like huge needle needle movers because again you have to hope that Barkley stays healthy and how much tread does Henry have on the tires we'll find out but those are the two that kind of stand out. I uh, I love the Barkley move just because of the fighting that he's had with Tiki Barber since he signed that. Deal. Oh wait, what? I missed this. I missed this. Yeah. You missed no, hold on. I missed this. And if Tiki Barber's been in the news for being a dumb fuck, I need to know what's happened. What happened? It's not it's not being a dumb fuck. It's hilarious. So after Bar after Barkley signed with the Eagles, Tiki Barber came out and tweeted something like, um, "Saquon to the Eagles, you're dead to me now." Uh, like, cause he went to the Eagles and it was, yeah, a yeah, okay, sure. uh, so then Barkley came back at him and they've been going back and forth. Barkley was like, don't smile at me the next time you see me. There's like now a real beef that has come out of this because <laughs> Tiki Barber said, you're dead to me for signing with the Eagles. Like, I feel like in text form, like that was clearly tongue in cheek, but Barkley got pissed and is now <laughs> hating, like, hates tiki barber now it's amazing i'm like look at these two giants right i'm 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 here for the tiki barber hate fuck that guy <laughs> that's what i was gonna say like who the hell is tiki barber to say shit yeah, no like, fuck, honestly fuck man that like at least i love was, me some ronde barber but i was tiki gonna say you know like, ronde, ronde was the better of the two clearly absolutely down. uh i i do like the saquon move uh and then uh who the eagles get as their backup quarterback i know they got someone else there to back up jalen hurts that it's, it's going to be a decent option so i think the eagles are going i don't want to say going all in but they're reloading to where i think if it doesn't hit this next year there's going to be big changes so I, i'm watching that i'm still not convinced they're going to get over the hump but definitely intriguing uh, Steven saying Mac to Mac to Jags move the needle. I, that He's one was a, weird to me. The Jags fan. That just, yeah. I know that, but like, <laughs> why? Actually, because does that mean you're giving up on, on Trevor Lawrence already? Like that's. Don't you remember what I posted in the chat? Like, <laughs> I can't believe like, is it more crazy that the Jags traded for Mac Jones while having sunshine or that they have sh sunshine and they traded for Mac Jones? Like, Either way, it doesn't make much sense because yeah, I don't know. I don't move, think Mac but... Jones is a good quarterback, starter, or backup. Right. But what are you saying about Sunshine if you think that bringing in Mac Jones is a good idea? I mean, if you just want to waste draft capital and money, like fine, great, good, good job, you succeeded in that. Uh, but the other, the oh shit, where is the other, the other one? Um, oh right, Matt saying that the Texans are also making moves. I think that team is going to be really intriguing this next year. Where I think they, I don't again. Yeah, they, the I Texans have made some run, quiet, sneaky moves, but they've they were sneaky last year, and they've just gotten better in this off season too. So, I, I man, that's what I'm saying. Like this tampering period has just yeah, been on fire. I tell you, it's too much to track. It, it, like, it's all about hiring those minority coaches from the Bay. That's it, the key, it, right? It'll turn your team around. And get, come, come get you one. We need more picks. <laughs> I just feel like Scott's like out here, like a, a vendor at the flea market, just saying, "Oh yeah, I will. I will. Everything's great, but we got something. I will stump I for this cause." <laughs> it feels so dirty to hear. Come get you one in in reference to a minority coach. Hey, look. As long as they end up head coaches, right? No, you, know, you tried the Rooney rule. They skirted that. You put the draft picks out there. And look, brothers is getting hired. I mean, Eric Benemy can't still can't get a fucking job. But if you if you come to the Bay, you you're probably gonna make it. So we 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 can keep turning these third round draft picks. It's a win win for everybody. I mean, don't ask Steve Wilkes how it worked out for him, but. <laughs> Everybody else should be all right. <laughs> but see, like, Mike, Rex, get we it. got him. Come get you one. He just makes it. I want that to be a shirt, but it can't be a shirt. Like, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Since you're saying I'm with Mike, it does sound weird. Look, we got a coach for everyone. Take your pick. And I think what's I think what makes it uncomfortable is the way that Scott says it. you're like, oh yeah, okay, like this is cool. Like yeah, nothing, nothing to miss here. And they're like, wait a minute. He's just out here hawking. Yeah, no, I mean it's a good thing. That's mm. that's the funny part of it. It's just like it doesn't matter. Any black, just <laughs> I just <laughs> Black off our staff. <laughs> we can fix race card. <laughs> God's holding them out like a deck of cards and a magician doing a trick. Pick a black, any black. I like that. I like that. You like that? <laughs> Like, you just imagine Kyle standing on you. Everybody, everybody, step right up. You want blacks, we got them. Big blacks, small blacks, whatever you want. Blacks, tall blacks, short blacks. Okay, wait, hold on. Because uh, <laughs> you're at an auction in the South in 1839. What is more like, is Kyle more like approaching this of like standing standing on the stage like, who needs a black? Come on, get your blacks over here. Or is he more like a vendor at a baseball game, like blacks, flags, we got flags. <laughs> okay, or, or the third option, or, yeah, the the the. Okay, well, you give your third. Go. I was give gonna say third. third. Is he being sneaky about it? Like he's in a trench coat on the corner. He's like, oh, <laughs> hey, we got them blacks. You look. You looking for some blacks? I guess you're looking for some blacks. <laughs> I was thinking more like the the old nineteen or eighteen sixties uh, snake oil salesman, <laughs> just like <laughs> going from town to town setting up shop. Like, check out the blacks we got. I know you heard about it. I was in the last town over. They sold. I sold all the blacks. <laughs> Get you one before I go to the next town, and I got a re inventory. Dirty, you want to regrow that hair? Have I got the product for you? Black. <laughs> I can't believe Mike is going in on this and not getting oh, uncomfortable. God. And yes, of course, Gabe, we need the Lou and Holtz, Lou Holtz impression of that. Oh. I just think it's, uh, it's not right that we should be talking about the color of a coach's skin. <laughs> all about the coach's character. Is he a leader of men? That's all that really matters. <laughs> hey, coach, what do you think about Mark May, though? Mark May, <laughs> son of a bitch. That piece of shit. <sighs> wow. Oh, God. Oh, oh, good Mark shit. May. That bar said, "This is the funniest of the show." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and who knew it took talking about oh, selling peddling, black peddling blacks coaches to get draft picks? Go figure. Oh, man, I feel like it. this is the show that it either blows up or we get canceled. Like, yeah, it's going gonna to say, yeah. "There's <laughs> only two paths from here: <laughs> ending us or stardom." <laughs> and the best part is, I read that. I read that as actually uh, Mr. Mr. Unlimited saying, "This is awkward." Because yeah, he, he would be <laughs> yeah. one of the people like, "Oh, this is awkward, guys." Oh, I'm really guys, I don't feel <laughs> comfortable with this one. <laughs> that bar is saying uh, tonight's topic. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. We no, did not. No, yeah, nobody I said know. anything about no, slaves. No, no. We're no. talking about selling black coaches. Totally different thing. Uh, they're getting money. Uh, that I will not like say. if Marcus Freeman wants to uh, get on the staff, then he can. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare take Marcus Freeman from the University of Notre Dame, okay? He needs to stay in South Bend forever. Well, I they mean, if you're gonna say his name, man. say his name correctly. Free man. <laughs> no slaves here. No mm -hmm. slaves here. Dan yeah, said this last few minutes. Has been <laughs> 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 craft root sports and random historical banter. Exactly. <laughs> Oh shit! We're all about the education here, you know. We know the public school system ain't what it used to be, so we're here to fill in those gaps. <laughs> what if it's uh, one more? What if one more? Just and then we'll end on this. What if it's like the door-to-door -door vacuum salesman? <laughs> 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 hey, ma'am, are you interested in a black head coach today? Because boy, do I got a deal for you. <laughs> <sighs> Do 
Do you, did you guys ever have that actually happen or like oh was it yeah the, the dude encyclopedias because we i remember having the oh, encyclopedia I, no i the vacuum the vacuum you legit, wow yeah, yeah the, in fact the vacuum actually happened to me since i've owned a home like are you kidding they still yeah. Do that shit? yeah you know it happened oh damn time is must be tough <laughs> dude actually had to pay me a hundred dollars because he tried to do the demonstration on my bed sheets and like sucked it up and fucked them up and he was like <laughs> Oh, um, that wasn't supposed to happen. I got to talk to my boss, and they they cut me a hundred dollar check. Oh, that poor guy, dude. Yeah. That was probably that probably hit his book. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. He, 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 if you're out there pushing vacuums on the street, well, you're you're probably not working for the San Francisco 49ers. Let's just say that. No, guys, Sarah just pulled one more up. Just infomercial sale, <laughs> like Billy <laughs> May style. <laughs> If you call now, we'll throw in two more black coaches. That's three black coaches for 1995. Four installments. <laughs> we got we got oh operators gosh. standing by. Call on in. If it's busy, call right oh back because we're always processing orders. Uh, R.I.P. Oh Billy Mays. What a Wait. weird uh, Dan saying that. Yes, there it is. The, yes, the Kirby salesman. That's that's who I dealt with. Yep. And that's what Rex was $1, saying. Rainbow vacuum or Kirby vacuum? Jesus yep. Christ. No, dude, they're expensive as hell. That's yeah, insane. They're, they're not cheap. How much is a Dyson? <laughs> that's, uh, by the way, Sarah, that's Google number two for the night. <laughs> Uh, all right. Anything else we want to talk about with legal tampering window? It was crazy. It's just going to get crazier uh, because the salary cap doesn't exist and teams will do anything to get a Super Bowl. Uh, anything else you got on it, Scott? No, I'm good. I think we I think we've wrapped up the NFL talk for the week. <laughs> I mean, yeah, really. Like, what else can you go? Oh, I let me ask. Let me ask you this. Justin Fields, what happens with him and the Bears number one pick? Oh, jeez. <clears throat> Wow. What like I don't even understand what's going on there. Uh, like at all. Uh, that that whole situation is weird, man. Just weird. Right. How about the wait, speaking of the Bears, wasn't it the Bears who had the the uh the cornerback that showed up talking about uh, I had a sex addiction last year? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a cornerback that had sex addiction. Yeah, so the last season he had to go to therapy for for sex addiction. And I was like, "That's did he miss games? I guess I I don't know. I just saw that he was a, like it, the the statement said that he came out saying, you know, oh, yeah, the last season I had a problem with sex addiction, so I had to go to therapy for it. Like, it's a weird thing to announce in your presser, uh, yeah, your new like contract sign. That's just a weird thing to say. Uh, Matt Barr is saying, Mike, tell the people what I think. Matt Barr is a firm believer in Justin Fields should stay with Chicago. Uh, they should use those draft picks to build around him rather than just continue to get a new quarterback and flounder for years like they seem to always do. Because that's what shitty teams do. They draft a quarterback. He sucks for a while. They don't build around him. And then they draft another quarterback and start the process all over again. Uh, I mean, it works out for the Bengals. Eventually. Well, yeah, <laughs> I had to watch it unfold, though. <clears throat> You're a motherfucker. Justin Jefferson to the Bengals. Shut up. That's the rumor. Yes, that's what I was going to say. I forgot Dan about Dan that. Uh, in with yeah, that one. That's where I was. Uh, I've heard from Wait, lots what? of Bengals fans. So this started as a, a Twitter rumor in Bengals Twitter where they just said, now that they're clearing all this cap space and they've got all this room. Justin Jefferson to the Bengals. He doesn't have a quarterback now with Cousins gone. Uh, there's no reason for him to stay in Minnesota. Let him come to uh, come to Cincinnati. Uh, the LSU reunion uh, with the Super Bowl in Louisiana this year. Like, let's let's get it done. And it has taken off. Like, people believe this wholeheartedly now, oh all because God. of the rumor that got started on Bengals Twitter. Oh, of, Wouldn't no. it be great if Justin Jefferson came to Cincinnati? I love it. I love. Tampering uh, again. No thanks. Hard pass on that idea. I'm good. Why? Why? I no. They don't need Chase and Justin Jefferson. I'm I'm good. I mean, you know, when uh, what's his fuck is thrown on the ball because Burrow's injured, it, I, it might not matter. But if Burrow is healthy for an extended period of time, nah, I'm good. No thanks. Neither one of them play defense. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> That's true. 
doesn't matter. DJ Reader probably leaving the Bengals. I don't think they're going to get to resign him. Defense is fucked. It's over. It's over, man. The window has closed. <laughs> it's done. I have no hope for this year. Hey, uh, but it's so, okay, Mike, because you still got the Reds, right? I do have hope in the Reds. They've they've given me hope. Those sons of bitches. Uh, I'm, I'm Boy, this is going to be fun to watch. It's going <laughs> to be fun in summer. Let's talk basketball. Boom shakalaka! So it sounds like March Madness is expanding, fellas. Um, this was a story from like a week ago. We didn't get to it last week, uh, but apparently there is real momentum in the field being expanded from 68 teams. Not as crazy as numbers that they've thrown around in the past where I've heard like 96 teams they were talking about going to at one point, but this uh, there was an anonymous source that was quoted as saying, yeah, probably 72 to 76 teams. They feel like they have to do something because there's already like another postseason tournament that's forming for, for next year, and they need to expand to keep the teams interested in the NCAA tournament, not in some of these other tournaments that are popping up. Um, mm-hmm. I find that crazy. That yeah, what? might, if you that sounds hear- like a horrible reasoning for expansion because we're worried about their wandering eye to this lesser tournament that's just kind of showing up. It's like this isn't ne- live golf. It's not necessary. It actually is live golf. So I don't know if you've heard about. Oh, are they trying to pay them a whole bunch? Like yes. yes oh, yes. okay. Yeah. All right. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, they better do something because yeah, yeah, no yeah. money, money yeah. talks. So yeah, <laughs> like the schools will be fine with going over to that other tournament. Y'all better do something, NCAA. People are gonna be like, look, do we want? Okay, because here's the here's the tournament. Next year it's gonna be an in season tournament. They're doing it as an in season tournament, uh, but there is plans for other uh, like postseason tournaments. Uh, so next year it's called the Players Era Tournament. It's eight teams in season. Every team that participates gets a million dollars in NIL money that they get to use. The yeah. winning team gets another million dollars. So <laughs> there is a very real possibility that teams are gonna get. You know, somebody's going to get $2 million in NIL money that they can then use the next year. And if this continues, uh, the future of NIL is crazy, man. Like this is, I never envisioned something where somebody might create a tournament and pay teams in NIL money to get their participation. We might be looking at a point where the national title doesn't matter because we won this NIL tournament for a $10 million purse. Like, this is fucking bananas. I never thought of that this was a possibility when NIL came into the picture. Scott, you are nodding vigorously. At this. I am I am here for this. Anything that disrupts the the standard, the the old NCAA, whatever the NCAA is established as the go to, the tradition, whatever. Nope. Come in and burn that shit down son uh, that's why they're trying to expand to it like we haven't even started the the expansion on football and they're already like hey 16 teams you also 16 teams y'all in for 16 teams <laughs> like i love it like that nil money is forced in their hands forever they could just sit there and be like we don't have to change for the ncaa i mean I, i'm not even trying to be an asshole but they literally forever hit us with the where are you gonna go <laughs> and now, now the answer is, I don't know, this tournament over here where they're ponying up. Like, oh, shit. Um, so, uh, yeah, y'all want to come into this NCAA tournament? Like, well, everybody, fuck it. Like, bring, bring them all in. Oh, we'll give you, whole, we'll whole give you thing? breakfast now. Everybody? We'll, we'll just we'll do all of pay, them? We'll yeah. pay for cream cheese on those those bagels for you. Come on, <laughs> come on down. Like, right, we can stop. <laughs> you can stop sending shit photos of the horrible meals. You can be like, "Hey, we was eating steak tonight. Look at NCAA ponied up. Hey, look at us." Probably not. I, just, but... I think the best part you guys buried the lead on this is like this is how Xavier gets to a Final Four, right? Because <laughs> when like all the players at UK, Kansas, Duke, whatever, go to chase the actual cash, like. Psh- straight shot to a final four banner baby like let's go like i'll take that we get the the ncaa final four when it means as much as the nit final four does yep exactly you know why because we'll still be able to hold hold that over dating all those other punk ass schools so like we still will have that bragging rights and honestly like this is where we're headed i said it a while ago like these schools need to figure out what's going on and realize they need to just start licensing their names to teams fielded by like the live sports foundation. Like let the Saudis come in, buy these teams up, license your name to them. And let's just cut right there. Cause uh, what was it? The men's basketball team in Dartmouth or whatever the hell unionized. 
now that if this like that's going to start to force these schools to go to court to say, yeah, we shouldn't have to pay these people. I'm going to be honest. I don't think they're going to win that. And then they're really fucked. Like, that's it. That's the end. And we might as well just shift there now. Like, let the NAL tournament be the model. Have have the not a like not a U, but like the basketball tournament type teams just form and let let dudes play. And like, let's see this chaos unfold because it's so just going to be great for us, the fans. You're saying this, the team is no longer like comprised of <clears throat> at the school. You're saying that school licenses their name out to a team and that team is just professional athletes that compete under the name of the school. Yep, exactly. Until they can go to the NBA. So you all in, man. Here's why that's not going to happen. I was going to say, I was like, I think that's a bridge too far. That's it's (laughs) it's not going to happen because the we'll see the NBA is not subsidizing this in any way. The reason why there's a G League and those guys go there to play is because they're getting paid by like the NBA, like it's subsidized and there's a a correlation there. The OWGs aren't going to be like, you know what? You could just have our name. Give us a cut of this billion dollar industry that we've created. Uh, we'll just take a little bit of it for the for the naming rights and you go get all that money. There's no way that they do that. What would happen instead is they cut every other sport except for football and basketball and like <laughs> a few women's sports because of Title IX. And then that's it. And then they just run off of that. They're like, this is our athletic like- program. Could they actually afford if even if that's what happens, could they actually afford to play pay that many athletes yes. the right wages? Like yes. honestly. Yes. Hmm. Why not? Why wouldn't they be able to? Because I don't like again, if if because these players, like basketball players, aren't gonna be going in making minimum wage, right? Like if they win that legislation, they're owed a salary, they're gonna be making way more than minimum wage. And if you add up the number of people you gotta pay, plus all the coaching staff, all the other support staff. I don't think you're gonna be able to break even, let alone turn a profit. Mookie, the do you realize the television deals that are coming up as everything expands, as we have expanded March Madness and we have expanded college football playoffs, and the amount of money that the athletic departments are going to be flooded with because of the TV rights with these big time like overblown conferences with 20 teams? Like it is going to be insane the TV rights that the SEC and the Big Ten get on, on their next negotiations. Like those those schools are going to be flooded with cash. And I know like, okay, where your point is valid is like the smaller schools. Max, your Sunbelt schools, Game Madison. Those type of schools could have problems if that comes into, into play. But I mean, where are you going to go? That's what I'm saying. You disappear here. In- <laughs> You have yes. other source of funds back to your organization and pay to players. Then maybe pull it off. But like that's what I'm saying, man. They just need to go all in on this, stop fighting it. Like capitalism will always win. Tough shit. Because at the end of the day, it's gonna end up this may be controversial, but it's gonna end up in better offense. Because I think it's gonna really condense the talent. We're gonna see some really top notch ball. Scott's cracking another beer. <laughs> I was thinking all I all I was thinking was uh, you know all all these problems can be solved with more white women's. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that ass I say I I say I. Uh, wait, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, Mookie, Mookie, say, say the name of the fruit. <clears throat> Acai. There you go. I think I got right. it. Now say it with an Italian accent. There it is. Yes, make it do it. <laughs> do it. It's a say a bear. Hey, hey, all right. All right. Give, it to, give it to him. Give it to him. Here, 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 here. Hang on. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to. <laughs> I got you for that one. <laughs> Woo! I don't like that he does it coast. right now. It was yeah, like, I know. It's not fun when he up. nails it. Like, uh, I wish it oh, well. No, the, it, we'll get him on the next one. I was going to say, like, it's not, this, this is not <laughs> one of those things that's going to be, you know, perfect for, like, I will fuck up. Because I almost just said cold cut sandwich and just quit. You should but. have, yeah. That would have, been, that would have actually <laughs> been funny, too. I um, uh, th- So we, t- we talked about this NIL tournament. There's another kind of 
future of NIL that that we got a glimpse of this week that is pretty crazy. Reports came out. Caitlin Clark, obviously, is, we talked about her last oh, week yeah. and, and how amazing uh, she's had, the, the amazing career that she's had. But what we didn't talk about was the impact that she's had on ratings. So on Fox, this is just on Fox, um, you know, that they revealed this, that the women's basketball ratings crushed the men's basketball ratings on Fox. And it's all because of Caitlin Clark. Like everybody was tuning in to all of her games to try to see what was going on. Uh, Fox had a lot of Iowa's games and it is rumored that Fox was contemplating putting together an NIL package for Caitlin Clark to keep her one more year at Iowa to help their ratings next season. Never would have thought of this as a possibility for NIL funds where TV networks can now say that player is a fucking star. We got that broadcasting, right? I want that player on the sidelines next year too. Let's pay him $10 million. Honestly, it's, it's, it's worth it to him to do it. And she should be willing to sign up for that shit because we've heard about how horrible the money and the, the conditions and everything are in the WNBA. Like what's the rush to get there and just be a forgotten afterthought. Cause nobody's watching that. You might as well, if they're going to pony up the dough, stay in college, get the accolades, get the fame. And the problem with the men's game is there's no stars. I mean, there's nobody even close to her level in the men's game. So yeah, I mean, good for Fox for coming up with that idea. And Hey, Caitlin, I don't know if you need to talk to Kirk's agent or what, but get that money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. Sell out. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay, well, I mean, well like, done. That's what it is, but like, ain't nothing wrong with that. Get paid, right? Hell yes. By the way, Big Merck saying that Deuce, his son, did not like the uh, the rap. Oh. Sorry, Merck. Oh. Didn't mean to startle the baby. Uh, my, my bad, man. Well, well, um, well put. Mookie, uh, how do you feel about TV networks coming up with NIL money for star players to help their ratings? I mean, that, like see, again, this is kind of what I was saying before, but this maybe is more of a coherent statement where it's like, if I'm Iowa – and Fox is paying Caitlin Clark to come back to school and we still have to pay all her room and board and shit like that. Like they got to figure that out because oh no, this is the all that ab- room and board for a student. Oh my hey, God. Hey man, like, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, how do you, how do you make that how math work gonna, both ways? You mean this building that was donated by an athlete and we don't have to pay for it and it's all just for the, man, now hold on a minute. What are we gonna do real. Athletes ain't donating man, buildings. Like, we're not rich enough for for that. Like that is that's more like hedge fund manager money. Come on, donating I, I, buildings. I just maybe don't the weight room. And why you think a school would be like? Wait a second. Hold on. You want to pay my star player millions of dollars to have her come back to my school to play for a national title again next year? Think of the room and board. Think of us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that's your take there, Mookie. <laughs> I'm just saying when you have to start paying them a wage as the school, how are you going to make that money back? Because the school's not making, well, I guess you're right in the TV ratings. I, I don't mean, know. They're going to take this. They're going to all just a trap to catch me and make me look stupid. And like, not only that, I mean, I, imagine how much money Iowa's brought in during this run. Like, I'd imagine more than they've ever brought in in the program's history. See, and that's the um, fucking bullshit because they'll sit here and they'll cry poor about this, but you're absolutely right. So, you know what? Those cops in the athletic poor department poor need them. to stop lying. <laughs> stop lying to us. Jackass. Just changed your take. You were just saying they couldn't afford to pay players, and now you're like, they cried poor for too long. What the fuck, dude? Sorry, is this not America? <laughs> Am I not allowed to change my mind? And Am I not allowed to flip flop? Yeah, just, do we go to communist Russia all of a sudden? What is this? <laughs> just, it was on a dime. You were like, you were uh, two seconds ago, you were like, see, they're, they're going to have to pay her room and they're going to have to give her room and board if she comes back. And they're like, you know what? They do cry poor. This is bullshit. Like, and <laughs> that is what makes me Mookie. That's the beauty of I me, haven't man. seen a turn like that since a member of the group went uh, brainwashed and then got thrown out. Uh, Sarah said, she has sold out all of her road games. Ticket prices have increased in Indiana. She's huge. So, yeah, yeah. the impact, not just to Fox, but to Iowa in general, to, um, you know, to the university, like 
it's crazy, man. It's Dude, crazy. They had to pay for so much gas to drive those buses across country <laughs> to get to that game. Are you kidding me? Gas prices are up right now, too. <laughs> My man with a gas price. <laughs> Dude, I heard that shit though. I was listening to the radio today and they're like, oh, inflation's up right now because it's March Madness and gas prices are going up. I'm like, you motherfuckers are going to tell me gas prices are up because basketball teams are driving around the country for tournaments. Get the fuck out of here. Could you imagine they're sitting there on the board contemplating? It's like, I don't know. We're not really sure if we want Katie to come back. Do you know how much we spent in gas last year? It is getting out of hand. Dude, she eats a lot of protein. That's expensive. <laughs> Goddamn inflation. Oh, man. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, shit. It's funny you say that, too, because I just saw a story, and I didn't I didn't put it in the rundown, but there was some team that was playing in their conference tournament, and their bus broke down, so they had to carpool to the stadium ah. and then got their ass beat. Like, that's a rough day for your bus to break down, and then you have to carpool with your boys to the game. And, you're, and, and your you season's win. over. Like, that's <laughs> it. Like, you're you're done. The seniors never oh. fucking playing again. You're not getting the Kalen Clark deal. Like, see ya. Goodbye. Sarah, Sarah making a good point. Even other schools should wonder to say she draws a crowd. Now imagine it's like that that whole thing where like the smaller schools, you know, get the get the paychecks from the bigger schools. Going. Imagine the smaller schools are like, no, 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 no. Here, we'll pay y'all. Come kick our asses. Just bring, just make sure Katie's in. Bring, here bring that Caitlin Clark. Like, bring that logo <laughs> that's screen, like, baby. It's totally fine. We will, we will take that ass whooping. Just make sure she's here so we can sell out. Fuck it. Now I've got all of the other athletic directors from the other Big Ten schools like getting together, counting. Pay change. the gas bill. Like, we got enough to get Caitlin Clark. Let's offer Caitlin Clark some NIL money to stay at Iowa because she'll be here twice next or, week. Or at the very least, we can do. We heard they're struggling with gas money for their buses. Let's get together, pool, and like we'll we'll pay for their gas money. <laughs> I, hey Scott, no, no, you forgot about it. Maybe they got some points they can cash in too, right? You know, uh, hey, whatever they got to do, exactly. just put the, the idea. Card. Yeah, the idea of other schools make it, doing whatever it takes to keep her at Iowa so that they could benefit is hilarious. Do you thought. think they do that though? Do you think like the schools use like they've got like the, they've got the Shell gas card that they use when they drive across country for the games? Do you think that's a thing? No, I'm sure they just pass that on to the the students who don't play basketball. Like, have you yeah. seen the tuition prices at these colleges? Like, they they worry about fuel points. Okay, <laughs> so funny story. I was talking to a, I was talking to a friend whose daughter is being recruited. She's going through all of that, and apparently nowadays the kids that call us regular the the people who just are the regular students, uh, we're we're considered NARPs, non athletic regular people. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? Yeah. Okay. We'll pass those gas charges on all to the NARP spec at the school. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could imagine <laughs> that that came out in like a document where they're just in a meeting and they're just like, well, fuck it. We'll just make the NARPs pay for it. <laughs> or Sarah White saying, we got this money from a, an anonymous donor. <laughs> Guys, Merck said Tyler Eifert said the Justin. What the fuck does Tyler like, Eifert know? Like, <laughs> yeah, he's not plugged in anymore. Get out of here. I'm starting to get excited now, guys. If this happens, I'm going to be super excited. No, okay. Oh, get this motherfucker talking about turning on a dime two seconds ago. He's like, doesn't matter. Defense sucks. It doesn't matter. We're not going to win games. <laughs> now he's like, oh, I'm going to jump. I didn't think it was really going to happen. Oh, but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really happen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic. Poo poo the idea. And then it's like, but wait. It's well, it's the yeah, it's the very it's the oh, I didn't want him anyways. Fuck you. That's uh, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. I'm gonna dump you yeah. before you dump me. Yeah, as long as as long as we're recognizing that that's what it is, that's all I care about. Of course. Of course. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, did you guys watch any uh, any of the women's uh, tournaments over the weekend that SEC championship in particular? Yo, like that? what the fuck? Those shenanigans go down. Yeah, well, I, w I wasn't watching, but I was kind of following the the Iowa um, shit was a Nebraska game. Caitlin Clark played in because that one was crazy. She, they were, she scored two points in the first half, missed her first nine shots from three or whatever, and came back, stormed back and won. And like, yeah, of course, Fox's ratings are through the roof. That was an entertaining as fuck game. Not um, as entertaining as the LSU 
uh, South Carolina to be game Hard five. to beat that, though. Ooh, Absolutely hard to beat that. Yeah. Gabe pointing out, that guy is still in jail. <laughs> is that uh, is that the, the girl's sister? Or the girl's or brother? The dad, or the dad? Or whoever jumped brother. out of the stands yeah, and like jumped on the court. If you, like, if you missed what happened at the end of the LSU-South Carolina game, uh, there was some pushing and shoving that happened. The benches cleared. A fan that appears to be the brother of one of the players jumped onto the floor to start getting in the mix. It got crazy. It was so messed up that for the final two minutes and 40 some seconds, South Carolina's entire bench was ejected. Uh, and then LSU's entire bench, except for one player and one player that was on the court, got ejected. So there was five on five for the remainder of the game. <laughs> and then they were talking about like, hey, uh, like ESPN got all screwed up because they were like, these players are likely suspended for the tournament too now. Like this is so. Then everybody was like, "What oh, the fuck shit. is going to happen? Is LSU and South Carolina going to have to go into the tournament and only have five players <laughs> to play in the NCAA tournament?" And I wish that would have been the case, but it was just ESPN being ESPN and not knowing the fuck they were talking about. Uh, but yeah, it was an amazing ending to that game. Um, I love. Listen, I love whenever there's a basketball fight. Ever since the Crosstown throwdown, I am all in on basketball fights because I like to just clutch my pearls and talk about how how terrible it is for the game to see something like this. The kid, uh, just, the example for the kids. <laughs> uh, and Matt Barr rightfully pointing out, LSU has the most pick-me coach of all time. She's a joke. Yes, Kim Mulkey came in after the game and instead of doing the normal coach speak of like, we have to do better. We got to respect blah, blah, blah. Uh, she was like, you know, I would have liked to see her try that with Angel Reese. Like you don't push a small girl like that. <laughs> like that was her take. <laughs> it was like, why are you picking on the little one? Go after Angel. If you're going to go after somebody, Kim oh Mulkey God. is crazy, man. That lady is bananas. Where do you rank her Scott on the crazy meter? Mm, top of the scale for sure. Like there's, there's little doubt. We've got plenty of evidence at this point. Like she's, she's done and said some just wildish outlandish shit. I mean, you know, it, it started off all fun and games with the wild outfits and shit, but now it's just like, yo, maybe you should chill. Just, you know, dude, she, take, she's crazy. take five off. <laughs> she is, she is cross the street and walk on the other side. Crazy. Like uh, I, I just like I, I, I like Big Bird all the time. <laughs> what? She's just always looking like a bird. Like she's just got like feathers. It's it's oh wow. yeah, her outfits yeah. like they're just it's wild. Lot. Like I I remember that it was just like oh okay, it's just a gimmick. But I'm like as no, time has gone not. on and you see yeah, yeah you've seen more incidents like this. You're like no, nah, I'm pretty sure she's just certifiably nuts. I don't know how you get players to come play. Like, imagine you're sitting in your living room and Kim Mulkey walks in in one of those outfits and is just like, let me tell you why you need to come to LSU. Oh, my God. This, like, this is why your you kid would the be the fuck out of my house, you. vacuum cleaner sales lady. Because this <laughs> is I don't need your goddamn $1,500 Kirby. I can go get a Dyson for 800 God, she's... I but but do, I but, do but something here in the next five years, something nuts that's gonna get her kicked out. Like she's gonna like she's gonna punch somebody. She's gonna Bo Bo Jackson or not Bo Jackson. Uh, what's his name? Bobby Knight. Think, no, the the Ohio State football coach. Dude, to deck that Ryan kid. Day. <laughs> no man, like oh, Bo Schembechler area. That's oh, you mean coach. like old school? No, I know, but let who is, who is? Let him go. Let him go. You got it. Fuck you. Don't, I'm don't googling it. this. Don't Google it. Just you cheater. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right, hold on. on. So it was, it. oh, not Bobby Hayes. Jesus nope. Christ. No, um, Bobby Hayes, but you're close. Come on, Mookie. Shit, what was his Okay, name? you are not allowed to add to the show until you figure out, and I'm leaving the <laughs> camera on you so that we can see you not Google until you can think of the Ohio State coach that uh, closed It's not John Wooden, head. but it's like close to that, right? Oh, my God, you are circling. You are, you're, God damn it. you're circling. Uh, don't don't touch that Google button. Uh, Scott, <laughs> did you see what happened with the Utah State women's basketball coach? God damn it! Uh, yeah. uh, did you see what happened to the Utah State women's basketball coach? Over Woody there? Hayes. There you go. Oh, oh. and oh, that God. was just so a stab better. in the dark. That's great. <laughs> 
But Tyson pointing out Bo Jackson. <laughs> yeah, that's why I started because I went Bo, Bo Jackson to Bo Schembechler to John Wooden to Woody Hayes. Bo Diddley. Bo, <laughs> Bo Diddley. <laughs> Bo Bridges. Oh, God. The Utah State women's basketball coach, they lost their game, and uh, she comes out for the press conference, and the, the first oh, question yeah. she was asked was like, how are you uh, going to rebuild uh, coming into next year? And she goes, I'm not. I was just fired. I guess <laughs> probably the last, uh, the last question and then got up and walked away. <laughs> like, she, yes, Spooky, that wow. reaction that you just had is the correct one. Dude, that's just that, the that's AD awesome. fired her and then sent her out into the press conference. Like, I Jeez. feel like you would at that point step in and be like, uh, coach is unavailable. We've uh, right a different direction. Yeah, uh, if you have any questions? I'm happy to answer. But uh, because that's gonna be the story. Like they thought she was just gonna go up there and be like, "Oh yeah, next year we're hoping to bring in a good yeah. just keep and- quiet." <laughs> 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 she went straight for it. Like z- that's some zero cold to ass shit, man. Like that's that awesome. really is, to me. Man. That's that's the perfect way to start your job search. Because, like, you've clearly shown you got guts and you're just going to go for it. Like, I would open my interview with that that coach and say, so, I'd play the clip and go, how did you become so awesome? Tell me that story. Like, <laughs> that's my kind of coach right there. Um, all right. right, let's Since we're talking college ball uh, in the Horizon League quarterfinals this week, Oakland was playing and their student section took the – fan distractions to a whole new level. Uh, Now, if you don't know, earlier in the year, Oakland was the victim of a fan distraction when they were playing away, and some kid shaved his head. Uh, Like, he got his hair shaved in the student section uh, behind the the basket. So he, you know, did – was an amazing, uh, amazing thing that they that happened there. But that only in college sports, only in college athletics, <laughs> that pales <laughs> in comparison to what happened in oh Oakland, uh, because these kids, oh god, were not messing around, fellas. Uh, let me go full screen on this video. We're gonna go ahead and pull this up. Uh, the Oakland yeah, students, wow, here we go. There's the hair There's waxing. The waxing. Success waxing. Oh, the free throw will oh. not fall. Oh. Bro, what? <laughs> That's a good way to distract, I feel like, waxing your buddy's nipples. Oh. And it made the guy miss. Like, you're going to miss that shot if somebody's waxing their nipple in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and they did. They went straight nipple there. Um, That wasn't all, though guys oh boy see that was the one i saw you put up at first like additionally some kid got a tattoo behind a dude came and tattooed him like real life uh gun tattoo gun underneath the the nipple area just got a tattoo i'm trying to figure out where he got those fucking oakland underwear he's rocking like where the (laughs) fuck do you get those like the tattoo i've seen a tattoo artist but what the shit is that like the 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 bear is like the grizzly's biting his inner thigh like what the fuck is happening (laughs) <laughs> Why wow. is the guy doing the tattoo wearing headphones? What is happening? Because well, he can't. You don't want him distracted. Like you want him fucking focused, right? I I took this as like he works for the arena, so he was just like, oh yeah, I'll bring my tattoo gun, and then like, yeah, like how how do you get in timeouts? Just busted that out. Like they how dude, often they do you use and shit this? all the time because of safety, and this guy's got a fucking needle gun. Yeah, like, I, that seems excessive as all hell. Like, I mean, and if he makes if he makes the, the free throw, then, like, how much of an asshole do you look like? It's like, oh, I guess I won't do this again. <laughs> but now I've got this permanent reminder of the time I tried to distract the guy from making a free throw. What an imagine, asshole. Imagine telling your kids that story. Daddy, tell yeah. me tattoos. Well, I got this one. In memory of your grandpa when he passed away, uh, I got this one over here. This is uh, your mom's name and a heart, and it's our wedding anniversary. And I got this one when I was drunk, and I was trying to distract a kid from hitting a free throw. <laughs> well, Daddy, did he miss it? Nah, he totally sunk no. that shit. But you know what? 
Memories are forever, son. I made it on TV. Now, pull, pull it back up, though, Mike, because Rex saying it does look like a Sharpie. It does look like a Sharpie, but uh, the reports are that this was an actual an tattoo. An actual tattoo gun. That and seems then, dangerous as all fuck. <laughs> and then Tyson pointing out the obvious. Are boobs not a thing anymore? Like, <laughs> yeah. Couldn't do you they need to be boobs. that creative? Uh, <laughs> all right. Like, you want to do something? Up by 20. Oakland just, was up by 20 when this I saw that too, though. Like, yeah, just show brain if you're like trying to really get it. Like, nobody's been really like, did that dude just like... pull out a sack? Like, <laughs> like that'll get it. That'll get attention. I mean, it'll get your ass kicked out of the Even arena. That way. But for sure, that's making somebody miss a free throw if all of a sudden they just see a sack. Of, like, <laughs> And I mean, there was like four of them, so you could strategically do it throughout the game, right? Like, no, it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's a little bit less invasive than a tattoo, is all I'm yeah, saying. Right? Like, yeah, you know, your father whipped out his junk, and we were having a good time. It was college; we did crazy stuff. That's Better why we than can't the live closer to your school, son. Sorry, right? The random tattoo <laughs> underneath his nipple of just like a line, too. It's like, did that turn into anything, or is it just? You just got a line. Oh, you're cool. Thanks. Matt Barr said, I played basketball with the JMU players. They don't give a shit <laughs> what the whites are doing. They're thinking. Right. <laughs> but, but, but what would make you stop? I guarantee you is like that, that motherfucker just pull out his nuts. Like that, that would definitely make you, you know, maybe shank a free throw or two. Like, I, I feel like. <laughs> just Abe Lincoln me with the shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, I don't think I've heard that one before, but I think I can picture it. So <laughs> fill me in, Mike. What's the Abe Lincoln? Uh, you just got to go watch Waiting, man. Uh, you got to oh, do it in that one. See, okay. All right. I mean, I'm always looking for an excuse to watch that that top notch quality film again. You know what, though? You should, this should be what your fourth or fifth Google of the night. Why don't you go ahead and Google it? Yeah, just Google. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, uh, Hanging out your nuts, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Hang it. Oh, I was going to Abe Lincoln from uh, Waiting. Uh, it's kind I, of love the, I love hearing the keyboard the click away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the nat sound of the keyboard clicking away. Top notch mm. audio. Top, top notch <laughs> podcasting right here, right? So that didn't come up with it. So what should I do now? Abe Lincoln from Waiting. Balls, balls, uh, white balls. removal doesn't work. The laser will blind them. And then Sarah said, He hey blinkened you, which is a great <laughs> reference. <laughs> uh, that is and that's I, fantastic. You know uh, Sarah deserves it for the men in face. <laughs> All right, boys, there's a trend going on on TikTok right now that we have to talk about. And Scott, this is like right up your alley. I don't know how I got on this algorithm, but apparently kids are watching 80s and 90s NBA games on YouTube oh, mm -hmm. and then talking about how trash the NBA in the 90s was. They put up uh, like even games with Jordan where they're like, why is nobody playing defense? There's not even a hand in Scottie Pippen's face. Uh, here's Luke Longley uh, shooting a layup instead of taking it to the hole and dunking. Like just ripping on the quality of basketball in the 90s. Scott, I know, I know where you stand on the debate. I know how you feel about Michael Jordan. But these kids saying, uh, well, let's put it this way. Basketball in the 90s fire dumpster fire fires fuck it was the last time basketball was actually played correctly like i don't want to be look I, i'm not old man like i'm not beating my fist on the table but i don't play defense and yada 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 and it's not physical like i i don't have time for that type of like you know uh unbridled nostalgia but it's it's a different game and I, i'm I mean, if it's not your brand of basketball, that's fine, but it's definitely different and it was more physical and they did play more defense. I mean, the idea that you would say that, you know, they're not playing defense compared to day's game is just patently absurd. It's not necessarily that they weren't 
playing any defense. It's that they were playing bad defense. Like the, the one that I saw Scotty Pippen was taking these three pointers and Gary Payton didn't even put a hand in his face. Like didn't, well, yeah, I mean, you could find, him. but I mean, you could find bad highlights in any era of but whatever this isn't you're like an for, NBA like, finals game. This isn't in any other get like, this isn't a regular season game. It's it was finals. doctored. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, the glove, the, it was, it's called the glove. Like, is there anybody today called the glove? Cause they play lockdown D no. So shut the fuck up. Like <laughs> there's not even defensive specialists in today's NBA. Cause that's not a thing. Like there were defensive specialists. Ask them to go watch some Charles Oakley highlights and see Ooh. if he plays defense. Ooh. Okay, Ask them if Charles Oakley plays D here's the thing guys, we have lived to see the next generation shit on what we grew up with like we yeah and i say fuck them <laughs> i agree with you absolutely man because it's it, it's no it's it's bullshit like I, I heard about this and i was listening on the radio it's like this is stupid this is a stupid conversation and sure you could cherry pick is it though is it stupid right. and here's why hey, Sorry, man, you, mr covid is a specialist <laughs> Dude, he got hit with a hundred thousand dollar fine. Rudy Gobert, did you see that? A hundred thousand dollar fine. Yeah, I did see that. Six games. Whew, he's, he's crazy, crazy. But again, that's why he's a defensive specialist because he's. I, did, I enjoy. I enjoy referring to him as Mr. COVID, though. Yeah, that's so fantastic. That's, uh, that's right? well done. <laughs> oh man, spot on. It's, but I don't think Mookie. I don't think it's that crazy that this is a thing because think about just recently there was that big dust up when JJ Redick said that. Guys like Bob Cousy played against plumbers or like whatever. Like it, it is natural to just look at the game from years past and be like, that was shitty. Like that was terrible. It was bad. It, like you, you look back to like 60s and 70s basketball and you're like, all they're, all they do is chest pass. What the fuck is this? Why do they <laughs> all have short shorts, tall socks, and they're just chest passing? Somebody fucking bring back the, t- <laughs> bring back the peach baskets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you watch the, oh, like you watch those leagues and then, and then it's like no wonder why magic was so amazing because he fucking didn't just go here you go here like he, he wasn't a goddamn fucking training video on how to pass the ball in basketball like he just had style and flair and people were like what the fuck you're allowed to do that shit did you see that he put it behind his back first this is crazy shit so it's like Every generation has an inflection point where you look at the previous generation's basketball and you go, it was actually kind of shitty. Like this wasn't a good game to watch. It was kind of insane. And the generation that grew up there holds on so fucking tight. And they're like, no, no, it's changed. It's just changed. It's not the same game. anymore. What we had was pure. What we had was great. And we're at that point now, Scott. We're fuck, We're the boomers. We're hanging on. Nah, fucking nah man, fuck you. I ain't no fucking boomer. Get out of here with that shit. Like, <laughs> if you're defending you 90s it. basketball. I'm not defending it. You're a boomer it, in this it, game. It was trash. It was shit is wrong. Like, yes, today's game is more advanced, more sophisticated, fair. But at the same time, I do think they're, the way the game was played back then was different. And it doesn't. it doesn't make it trash. I think yeah, I was just going to say, I was like, there's a, there's a line that I understand where you're just like shitting on it for no reason. And it's fine. Like if you grow up watching in a certain way, I totally get why you would look at it and be like, ah, that's boring. Like I didn't see it. But to just say, oh, it's trash or they're not they're not doing this or not doing that. It's like, no, it's just a different game. Funny, kind of funny that you mentioned this, because I was just sitting there thinking about it the other day about how. When we grew up watching baseball, you didn't have a bunch of guys throwing 100 miles an hour. And Tommy John was like, oh, man, you know, a thing, right? But like now, Tommy John, I told my brother this afternoon when there's there's the rumors that maybe Garrett Cole needs Tommy John. And I was like, you know, I learned today that Garrett Cole has never had Tommy John. And my That's first thought was, crazy. what the fuck? How, did, how, how has he reached this age and not have Tommy John? Like, you just assume everybody who makes it to a certain point in baseball has had Tommy John. Cause a lot of these guys have had it before you, they're a household name, but it's just a different game. Like it's not that I like baseball more now or less. It's just like the game's changed and I like both versions. Like there's a place 
for all versions, I kind of guess. I mean, now basketball in the 70s and shit, nah, ain't nobody got time for that shit, slow ass shit where there's one <laughs> black guy in the court and a bunch of white guys standing around. Right. Watching, right? And I no. I think that's that's the line to me to draw. Yeah. Right? When, yeah. when it became a true professional sport, not just when we let everyone play, because that's another part of it that drives me nuts with baseball. Of, Babe Ruth was so good. It's like, well, he's playing against. Oh, no, I'm totally people. with you. Right. No, I'm yeah, totally with you. But, like, anytime before everybody could play, it's like, right, well, right. that was a completely different game. Like, there's not even, you can't even really compare that to anybody. Right. Like, the 90s, they that. were still professionals. They weren't playing against plumbers. So, again, like, that to me is why it's not trash. And it just seems short sighted to have that take, right? <laughs> honestly like i would all right so let me ask you this you take you take the the warriors the back-to-back -back warriors you put them against one of jordan's bulls if you put them in the 90s style rules bulls win hands down if you put the bulls in the warriors set of rules warriors win hands down right i don't I mean know doesn't that what it kind of that. no because what what use is dennis rodman cracking skulls underneath when steph curry's pulling up from the logo like you put the <laughs> warriors in the in the 90s and the defense is going, what the fuck? They're allowed to do that? Why are they getting three points every time? This is bullshit. Like, <laughs> no, but see, like, I don't think it, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't think it would go down like that, though. Like, because I think it the would. Bulls on offense would wear them down in a way that I think they could come out and push that line higher up the court to defend that three. They don't have to worry about it. They're like, go ahead, take the layup. We're getting three every time down this side. You're taking two. We're just going to start pulling away. Like, this is a different. It's a. Well, and I go to, going to, to an even different, like fundamental level. Like, I just think that today, like every generation, like you get, they're just better athletes. So like, while it might be fun to watch that happen, it's like, I'd be sitting there watching as like, it was only Jordan who wasn't gassed. Like think about the rest of the squad who's just sitting there like chasing around these guys, even trying to defend them for the entire game. Like no matter what rules they're playing against, those bulls are getting torched and Jordan's like, there's certain players that could overlap eras or, you know, transcend whatever it is and, and do like a, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, well, no, you know, no matter what Jordan would be the superstar that he was then that he, you know, today as he was then, but there's definitely like a, a hierarchy when it comes to that shit where there's some guys who would still be able to play in today's games or at least be competent where you're just like, wait, well, you're using Luke Longley. It's like Luke Longley wouldn't have any plays. He would be like a 12th man on some somewhere. And he'd just be a tall guy. Fair. That's it. Yeah. Like, I think that's, so, the so wait, so, so, that's the question to ask. Would more players from the 90s excel in today's game? No. Or would more players from today excel in the 90s game? Could like, you imagine how winded those motherfuckers would be trying to But see, that's that's exactly it. We're like Steph Curry could get by because he can shoot the lights out, guaranteed. But then you start to go down that jump chart to like the third guy, and they would get murdered in the 90s. Like, and so that's but how much more would you were need than about, Steph? You were talking about the you were talking about the like the, the 72 and 10 warriors, like the 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 third guy down was still shooting fucking lights out. Like there, there's a reason why Golden State was what they were in their prime because they reinvented how to score in the game. They were like, hey, we could get more points if we just shoot from further out. Like, we don't have to be big. We don't have to fucking wrestle underneath. We could just stand way out here where nobody comes and just fucking start lighting it up. That's, and they that's did it. That, that all, that's all it took to win, like, a couple of titles. No big deal. That was all it was. But I, before we get off this, I, I want to So, Scott, you're saying that if the, the 72 and 10 Warriors played the 90s Bulls in 90s rules – the Warriors would win. Yeah. Again, I, I mean, I just, I don't think, I think they're just. Jordan gonna, would, we got Scott to say that Jordan would lose. Jordan well, would be bested. But Jordan is just one guy. Like, you're talking about the entire teams playing each other. And I just, again, you're just taking all the fun out of it for me, Scott. With I know. Like, I know. Like, I know on, that's man. not what you're, you're I know, that, I know that's like, not what, what you're looking for. But I mean, it just, it's true. Like, every generation, the athletes just become better. So just, just on that, just pure athletic standpoint, not not taking into effect any rules. You're just like every generation. You're just like, yeah, they could play backwards because they would be able to adjust to the rules because they're better athletes. Like that's it. That, that's where it be. Moving on.
Oh, wow. this motherfucker right here. This wow, motherfucker dude, right here. I was here. trying to let you finish. I wasn't trying to cut you off, but wow. I'm sick of this shit. And Matt said, uh, Scott is so so right. He also I don't, told me that I'm right. So boring. <laughs> oh, also, guys, we did not take this into account. Rex a million is 100 percent right. So he did say that. Oh, Robin yeah. would have yeah, he's got a he's got a good point. He's yeah, right about would. that. I mean, Robin, like Draymond would try to kick him in the dick, and then Robin would <laughs> laugh because he that's how he gets off, anyways. And then he'd fucking like he'd rip bitch out slap him, Draymond. he'd backhand him across he'd the court. Some shit. But Rex also pointing out. Golden State's coach would be on the- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. See, so Bulls win, so- man. <laughs> See, Scott, like that's how you th- that was your in. Uh, uh, all right. Sorry guys. about rushing out of the party. I usually don't. My bad. <laughs> I apologize. You need blind fandom, man. That's all, <laughs> that's, that's uh, all we at- want here, Scott. Not the direction <laughs> of bullshit. Like, Jesus. Guys, we're, uh, we're running behind. Uh, we're into overtime now. And guess what? Your boy's got to drop for it. It's time for overtime. Miller for three. Oh, he banked it in. We're going to overtime. Well done. Like well done. I banked it in. I like that, was it nice. that was nice. I like that. I'm a pretty big fan of that. Let's play that one. Miller for three. Oh, he banked it in. We're going to overtime. Yeah, that's good work. I have that. Like that is. That is. You should start. Give give yourself a pat on the back for that. Thank one. You. Give yourself a rap air hole. Good I didn't, job. I didn't give myself that one. That was no, great. no, but it's fine. I mean, as long as you got one, you you earned it. You earned uh, it. That, uh, and secretly, when I made that, I was like. I really hope we can get into overtime today. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I was you, I would have been secretly steering it that way the entire time. I'd be like, yes, keep talking, bitches. Keep talking. Oh, shit, we've got to use this transition I just made. <laughs> Who knew? I got to be honest. I'm surprised that we didn't go 60 minutes on legal tampering, period. Like, there was so much shit there. But I, yeah, yeah, we totally could have. That was like the most football we've talked in forever. <laughs> and it was like serious. Which is funny because it's in the off season right before baseball is about to start. <laughs> MLS has just kicked back up. NBA, NHL are going into their playoff pushes here. And we're talking off season roster contract moves. Like, is it more evident than now that football still rules America? Football is the premier sport. Okay, listen, couple stories from the baseball world. So let's talk this real quick. Here's the pitch. Oh, shit. The first one, I want to give a little more uh, attention. Right. <laughs> I got to give Tyson credit in calling out, keep talking, bitches, keep talking. The show's new motto. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, all right, so this came out. Uh, the Miami Marlins had a press release that, uh, Scott, I'm sure you saw this. I know Mookie has not. Um, no, but not. in an effort to recreate some of the experiences that have happened at Lone Depot Park in Miami, where you've had the World Baseball Classic, where you've had the Caribbean Series, you've had like all of these events where fans go and are very excited to watch baseball. Uh, They play music, there's DJs, there's bands. It's a big fucking party uh, and it's a good time. The Marlins have now decided that you are allowed to bring instruments inside the stadium drums <laughs> trumpets like they have uh, they're calling for people to bring musical instruments into the stadium and create that atmosphere that we got to see it like the world baseball classic and as soon as i saw this guys as soon as i saw this story all i thought oh no tres cuatro ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I was Caesar hovering over it. This, man, Caesar like, would fucking love this. Oh, oh God, he'd have been yeah. talking about his, pe- his people going nuts. <laughs> That's what we do. We party. When there's a break, we party. <laughs> <laughs> when he's getting his ankle taped back together and strapped in so they can drag him off the field. Oh, no. Tres, cuatro. Ding, 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 Tyson stole it. Tyson stole it from me. I was sitting there and I was like, it's the return of the Vuvuzelas. We're, we're bringing them back, baby. Bring we back did. the rally monkey. Bring back all the shit. Oh, rally all of it. I'm, yeah. I, dude, I'm pumped. And I, I know that like Miami is trying to play to like the Latin crowd and the Cuban community and like uh, trying to play to that. Uh, but I want this to spread to other stadiums. I want it to oh, be yeah. like 
look, that's one of the best things about seeing a soccer game live is like the fans that are like chanting and singing and playing drums throughout the entire game, like nonstop. They don't stop the entire game. It is such a cool experience and a cool environment. And if they can replicate that and make baseball fun because there's nothing to do in between pitches and you just got to fucking sit there. But instead now there's a band playing up in section five sixteen. Ah, this would be the best. This would be so great, man. Well, and by all accounts, like all the players that, you know, for the most part, they all say the same thing. The atmosphere, uh, you know, at the World Baseball Classic and in those crazy Latin American games, whatnot, like it's the best. They thrive. They enjoy that. Like even if they're playing for the opposing team, like that's how basically, and, you know, they relate it to college. And it, 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 that reminds me, did you see where college is starting to like crack down on some of the, the fun stuff that like God, baseball Jesus. players can do in college. Like they're starting to regulate that shit. And I'm like, now you're going to take away what makes college unique and fun. So, you know, they've got to be sterile down there too. Come on, man. Like it, it's proven like the, the players want it. The fans want it. There's no reason not to allow it. Embrace that shit. Well, that's that's because the college teams got to get ready for MLB to buy them out when they have to start paying players and shit. So like, they're <laughs> just getting ready for that. Uh, do well, you think it just so, convinced Miami to just bring back the 90s uniforms? We'd be all right. basic, full time, not just Friday night throwbacks. Right, yeah, like, we Friday just want them all think, the time. Do you think they could get it to where you would have like a supporter section in like left field? Yes. Or do you think that the waving flags would be distracting and the batters would pitch a fit? Well, that's the one thing is because Miami did say you can bring flags into, which I feel like that's what will get yeah. shut down first is the flags because people are going to complain like, well, I, can, I couldn't see Spencer Strider's curveball coming off his hand because the fans in the in the center field bleachers were waving white flags at the time. Like there is absolutely no way the flags are going right. to be. I would like to see that, Mookie, where it's just like one section – of fans who have instruments and who are playing and like are all on oh, I'd be so they, they can tattoo themselves and rip their chest hair off. They just can't have flags. That's, <laughs> that's the line. Is what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt Barch, um, I mean, saying the seven train army is a thing for the Mets. So maybe there's already these supporter sections. They just don't actually organize at the game. Well, it's just not the, to the level of, that you see in like a soccer game with the chanting and the, the, you know, music and drums the and drums shit. you know what the i drum mean beats. Like, that's the, Dude, i love the drum beats it just adds another it, like it adds that soundtrack to the back of the game and i know tyson's being a dick saying that the best part of seeing a soccer game live is the fans because soccer is boring but given the different nature compared to football where you've got action quiet action quiet with soccer and baseball i think having that soundtrack underneath Oh, it just it just it kicks it up a notch. Sarah making a better point that saying and since yeah. when does this country ever listen to and do what the people want? That's a fair point. A hey, plus yeah. take right there. Rex also pointing out the Guardians had the drum beat. They did. There was that guy. That, and then they eliminated that, right? Like that guy. Didn't the guy died. I think they yeah, I think they like he like retired. Like I don't Well, I mean it got it taken away one way or the other. Oh, <laughs> Hey, get 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 my picture ready. It's happening again. Say, God, God damn it! God, God damn it! See, we shouldn't have went to overtime. Time. I made it to the whole fucking show, and now I gotta be yep. fucking. God damn it! This dude, now you're Michael Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck. And that sucks because there's one more story, uh, and this is one that I know you would like, Scott. Angel Hernandez, oh, already in midseason. Oh, this son of a bitch. Lance Lynn was pitching for the Cardinals in the spring training game. Uh, Angel Hernandez looked over to the dugout to say something uh, because they were chattering. He looked over at the dugout and Lance Lynn from the mound said, yeah, because even they know those were strikes. And Angel Hernandez tossed Lance Lynn. So he <laughs> tosses a pitcher from a spring training game, which already is bananas to do. Like these guys are only throwing like 40 pitches. They're going maybe three innings, and he just threw them out of the spring training game. So Lance Lynn then goes to the bullpen to finish his work because this is fucking practice. We're talking about practice. <laughs> he goes to the bullpen to finish his work. And, and then Angel Hernandez threw him out again, out of the bullpen, made him leave the stadium. Angel Hernandez threw out Lance Lynn twice in a <laughs> <laughs> It's my favorite story from the baseball. You, you can actually <laughs> do that? Like, what? I didn't, didn't realize that was a thing. Like, you know, uh, if you're in a union. 
spring training. Like it's spring training. It doesn't none of it's practice. So you got well, to but, but when you get like, ejected to go to the bullpen. When you get ejected in a normal game, do you, you have to go you to the leave. clubhouse? You go to the clubhouse, yes. Oh, I thought you just sat in the dugout. No, you have to go to Hung the clubhouse. Out, chilled, had some had some gum, some sunflower seeds. <laughs> you just Scott, what do you think about Angel doing this, being Angel already? I, this is the most classic Angel thing that's ever fucking happened. Like, I, at this point, I think he's in on the troll. Like, he knows how much he's hated, and he's just like, fuck it, I'm just going to embrace it. You, you think I can't one-up myself? Watch me. Do you think he's going to get actual backlash, though? Because, like you were saying, Mike, like, this is important shit. Like, guys schedule out their pitches and stuff, and, like, he's fucking around. Do you think the MLBPA no. is... No, they're not going to do He's in it. a union. They can't do anything to him. He's well, untouchable. Well, so Lance Lynn is in the union, too, so it's union versus union. It's union on union crime, Scott. <laughs> yeah, but you can't. Those unions know not to because they have a common enemy in the OWG owners. They don't... Uh, they're right. like, we're not going to... We don't need... Stalemate. We don't need this. Yeah. Um... Tyson with the correct question. Why does Angel Hernandez still have a job if he sucks so bad? It's the question we all want to know, Tyson. Because he's in a union. Yeah, because he's in a union. Same thing. (laughs) Because Ryan Um, McCarthy, because like politicians and meteorologists, they can be bad at their jobs and still keep them. (laughs) (laughs) That is a correct take, Ryan. Uh, (laughs) And Sarah saying, goodness, the fragility of that man's ego. Uh, Yeah, it's just because everybody knows he sucks and he knows that everybody knows he sucks so he has to overcompensate by throwing out a pitcher from a spring training game twice guys let's talk about these beers that we were drinking uh rate them on caesar scale dog or no dog scott i'll go to you first well i hope my picture's up because i'm drinking the acai bowl sour from high grain brewing company i don't know didn't it you're good now. You're. Oh no! Okay, I didn't hear. I didn't hear the music. I'm like, ah, oh, shit! Now I'm all the way out. Uh, the Acai Bowl Sour from High Grain Brewing Company, 5.4 percent. A whole bunch of flavors. A little bit of lactose in there. It, dog as hell. Like I, I don't even know that this beer is a sour, and it's better than some non-sour beers that I've had. So yeah, I, I love it. All right, good deal, Mookie. What were you drinking? Dog or no dog? Uh, started off with the brew dog, hazy, alcohol free, absolute dog. Uh, delicious flavor, decent thickness. Like it, it feels like a real uh, hazy <laughs> IPA. Decent thickness. <laughs> yeah, we we like the thickness here. We're down with the thickness. So white women's, uh, <laughs> white women's <laughs> hockey puck, absolute dog. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. Tuna can. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I already got a B. You're gonna make me piss myself. <laughs> <laughs> like this is overtime. I didn't plan for overtime. Oh, this up, then. Uh, I was drinking Founders all day. Chill day. It's a second IPA. Uh, I said it was a puppy at the start of the show. It's still a puppy. It's not quite a dog. It's uh, it's definitely a puppy, but it's a, it's a good beer. Uh, check that one out. I just like some of their other ones better. Guys, it's been a show. This is. <laughs> <laughs> it started off really weird. <laughs> that beginning part. I- Still very nervous that that's living on the internet right now, but thank you guys for sticking with us through all of the, all of whatever that was to start up the show. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, to step to the YouTube page, uh, hit that bell so you know when we go live and we post new stuff. Tell your friends, sub to the YouTube page, like share it out. Tell everybody, like, listen, these guys are great. One guy talks like Lou Holtz. One guy makes everybody feel uncomfortable because he talks about race a lot. And the other guy's a big fucking dummy. You should totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell all your friends that. Sub to the YouTube Facts. page. Let's get those numbers <laughs> up right. a little bit. Help us out. Uh, also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I will put up a Lou Holtz, St. Patrick Day safety tip video. Won't you? <laughs> so stay tuned for that one. We'll, we'll be turning that in real soon now. Uh, also join the Facebook group it's basically the comment section of the life in Facebook form uh, it's the only reason why I'm still on Facebook go hit that up shout out Belly of Sports Belly of Sports dot, uh, dot com tons of great content there awesome pods on the Belly of Sports Media Network we will see you all next week cheers everybody blacks here get your blacks hot fresh blacks over here <laughs> you'll never walk alone dog I feel like right now. <laughs>